you know, he had called to, for me to when he started on, the, on this film, but I wasn't available and I couldn't get out of it. And uh, so he had to, the production had to get going. And once, and he was like, "Well, let me know when you're free." <clears throat> um, so I knew at that point he had already hired artists, and there was, mm -hmm. you know, it's never guarantee that they can just make a space for you because production's production, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was actually going to be in this director's town for like my wife had a, a conference there and I was speaking at. So uh, I decided to just email this director saying, hey, I'm going to be in your town. Um, would you like to meet, you know, can we meet for coffee? And, um, you know, and uh, and and uh, and I was like, well, shit, I got to I got to entice him. So I said, I'm going to have some artwork that's going to blow you away. And uh, and he wrote back. and He's like, yeah, let's absolutely. Let's do that. That, that timing is perfect. And I was like, oh, fantastic. It's great. And then I realized, oh, shit, that's in two weeks. I don't have any artwork. <laughs> I don't have any, any ideas. <laughs> what to do. And I just, pro <laughs> and I just promised the A-list director images that are going to blow him away, which is like a high bar. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, uh, you know, I'm pretty tired, always working, like I was just saying. Just, um, uh, but you know, on weekends I, you know, make time to play soccer, spend time with my family, um, do a little art. Uh, I'm in my studio and uh, um, started doing family art night. So my daughter's in, you know, for a freshman in high school, and we just we just play like the when, I, when we do art night, it's like I just put music on mm. and. You know, we have drinks, she doesn't, but <laughs> we just, um, <laughs> it's fun. It's nice. It's a nice tradition. No, that's great. That's great. And I know, you've, I know you've been busy. We've been trying to like schedule this for quite a while and finally it's happening. So, so yeah. amazing. Thanks for having time for this. Uh, I mean, I've known you for, for quite a bit. I've obviously followed your work forever, um, you know, and, uh, yeah, there's there's like top five or top ten artists that I could that I could list. Like it's yourself, Craig Mullins, Ryan Church, oh, you know, wow. Dylan Call. Like those names kind of like got me into the industry. To be to be fair, like when I was when I was kind of learning um, how to do art and like being this you know young Polish student of yeah. electric engineering. Like, what am I doing? Am I gonna be an electrician? You know? <laughs> wow, I didn't know that about you. So. So yeah, so that was like, uh, you know, that was kind of like a big motivation. It's like, if those guys can do it, like I wish I could do something like those guys can do, you know? And I just kind of worked towards it and eventually yeah. like, got to a point where I am, so I'm very happy about it, you know? Absolutely. But, yeah, That's yourself and stuff. others are <laughs> a big part, big, big part of it. Um, yeah, you've been a veteran of the industry, right? Like how many years you've been, you've been in film and, and, and entertainment? I mean, man, you know, ages like my first job out of um, college was, uh, you know, I mean, you know, um, what you're, I know what you're trying to say is that uh, <laughs> I'm just, I was going to say you were just old, like, you know, veteran old is kind of the same thing. <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> but no, I, it totally doesn't like I'm, I, I, I'm, I felt like, you know, hey, I have gray hair, not you. I do. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love my early days, man. I got in. I was lucky. I got um, an internship at the only way to get from Ohio. I grew up in the Midwest, and there was just no. Even though I went to industrial design school, it was like that. Like how to make a design a vacuum cleaner, and it was really right. like that was like the top level of like. I had there. I had no teachers, so two could get me there. So I did a lot of self training, and then um, tried to get into car design because I thought that's more like realistic than movie work. Um, and then I got some internships in there and I realized, you know, being a concept designer is, uh, is, um, uh, it's our, you know, like you have to, when I get there, there's professionals saying like, Oh man, I've been, I've, you know, graduated from art center top of my class. And 
you know, if I'm lucky in 10 years, I'll get to, des I'll get chosen to design a, you know, concept car. And like, now I'm just doing like hubcaps and <laughs> interiors. And I'm just like, oh man, might as well just go for a, a, you know, just go for it. Just get my ass out to California and just try it. So, um, yeah, I got an internship and that got me my foot in the door just to literally just to start asking questions and learning skills and how to improve and just chain myself to a desk and keep what, drawing. What year was that? And I, I'm trying to put it in like a time scale. Well, it's embarrassing to say, but it was 19. Huh. I started at Lost Just Light Magic like 94 or something like that okay. <laughs> a while ago. My wow. first job, yeah. my first one of my first big jobs was doing storyboards on Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was I was I was shitting my diapers. Oh, well, not 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 anymore. But I was pretty young <laughs> when Forrest Gump came out. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yes. That was that's prior to to digital art. To like to be honest, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Like, what when was when was the Photoshop like the first Photoshop released? And it was like a like end of 90s right like in 98 97 yeah. something yep. something like that yeah yep yeah super wild how, how things have changed right like from then to now it's like we were kind of like are a history book in a way like understanding the whole birth and yeah you know, where digital art is um, yeah very, i mean very... i was i was just pulling out a, a friend of mine who's a videographer he's like i just want to get you you know some footage of you like you know drawing and in your studio and i thought well i can use some of that from this um, conference in paris that's coming up um mm -hmm. so i said sure and uh, i pulled out all these old originals like you know you know on the matrix i you know was doing drawings you know three foot long because that's what jeff dara was doing and i was inspired by it and you know just <clears throat> and it was just so fun to just like pull out a piece of paper and just like draw you know at that scale and um you know just using the old techniques and just you know I, I think literally my favorite thing in this in in art is to be like standing at a desk and you know drawing with my arm and you know it's kind of like a full body experience when you're creating art with your you know <laughs> in that yeah. way um as opposed to sort of sitting back with your mouse and and everything it's um it's it's i don't know it's visceral or i don't know i just uh uh, so I'm 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 happy to have been around during those the time of where people appreciated it and gave you the time to kind of you know draw and um, iterate in uh, in that way. Yeah, you think uh, you think it changed much since I mean it did it, it did but like how dramatically? Because I joined film like let's say I, film industry specifically because I've been in games video games before oh, yeah. up until recently video games have been completely different in terms of how they were produced and and approached than film industry because even when i was joining film industry had it was way more organized and you know way more like production kind of focused yeah compared to compared to video games although video games were picking up but you have like a kind of larger kind of uh, bird's eye view on the industry like how, how much you think it changed since you started um Hmm. Well, <clears throat> without getting like, I mean, without just personally, um, you know, um, when I think back about like when it, it used to, um, like earlier in the career, uh, in my career, I was, when I was in art departments, um, you <sighs> I don't know, because part of it is how my career has changed, and I'm, I can't really separate from how that has changed. Because you know, the the earlier I was, you know, embedded in the studio or in 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 with the directors and the art department team, and then we would go once the, um, you know, quite often I did a lot of movies with, with with the Wachowskis, and they would, you know, they're huge fans of artists, and they would just take, um, you know, kind of the top artists into um, when they'd go to Berlin or London or Sydney and. Um, you know, put them up with the actors and we, you know, and get to, be, you know, get all the per diem and play in this new city and still do the art. And it was really like a family, you know. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And, and they would bring you in, in into their family because there's so much about the art being integral to their work. So um, <clears throat> and then, you know, being remote, obviously, that's a lot more detached. It's not so much of a family. You're more right. of like a hired gun. And, and, and that, you know, I would 
even if those situations go around, once you start having your own family in your house and you want to, <laughs> you don't mind not having a commute. And um, so I was happy to be, you know, kind of young at that time when that was going on. Um, and now I'm absolutely happy to, <laughs> to just like turn in my, my, my hired gun work and then leave it and not think, have to think about it or, or, mm. um, um, so that's, that's perfectly fine with me as far as like, how's the industry changed? You know, I mean, one thing that I'm noticing right now is like, I'm on a film and I'm like the only person. And, uh, I mean, it's a start, it's, 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 a, it's a, it's a, it's a beginning, but, um, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I think with, um, with technology and, and, um, and certainly with AI later, you know, perf- that kind of like your A-listers are going to be able to turn out more work um then you know i think in every industry not just in art I th- you hear about you know when you read about ai and affecting every it, it's sort of like it's going to make the top people more productive and mm-hmm. um and uh, cuz it's just it's uh um so and i you know I, and you know I, you know i'm just curious how that's going to go if it's just uh, you know productions or producers are going to say to uh producers are going to say hey wow we did that whole movie with just a handful of people let's uh why are we you know the next movie let's only ha- have a handful of people right why do we need more <laughs> yeah. and uh um i'm just yeah i'm, I'm cur- just as something on my radar yeah i think i think about it too um i have my own thoughts where where things could possibly go with ai specifically but you know, it's it's funny. I had a I had this conversation with my friend John uh, John Baruby. He was uh, mm-hmm. he used to be a, a VFX art director over at Blizzard. He directed a cu- couple of cinematics too. Really prolific guy. Um, yeah. Uh, super super yeah. knowledgeable. And we're, we were just talking the other night about AI and the the concept of entropy. Um, because like if you understand how AI is being trained right now, it's basically it's it's sort of like it's gathering all the information that exists. It doesn't come up with new information, honestly. It's sort of like, it's only gathering what exists and the more data you have, the the more in, information it will be able to churn. But if, if you ask it something or prompt it for something that doesn't land in this kind of cluster of truth, let's say, it will kind of, they call it hallucination, it will, it will still try to convince you that it's true but it'll yeah. basically kind of kid bash information together to make it sound like it's true. But yeah. it will never reason why. It's just going to create based on information that exists, right? So it's kind of like like a copy, copy-paste kind of machine um, of like millions and trillions of, of different data information, let's say, right? Yeah. And And I was just thinking, you know, like funny you mentioned, you know, the idea of, hey, like producers thinking in a way where, hey, like if we can get away with just making a movie with two illustrators instead of five, or even one instead of five, then let's just do that from now on because they're gonna be able to produce everything we need. But that creates two kind of things. One is it discourages people who are like up and coming to continue. Oh yeah. So now the gap becomes massive, right? Yeah. And then those at the top dwindle away, eventually like retire or, you know, just sort Mm -hmm. of like the sample set becomes much smaller. And so everything kind of becomes more narrow visually. Yeah. if, If that makes sense, right? Yeah. And that kind of feeds to the entropy of things, meaning like, there's going to be less innovation because less artists are going to be involved. It's just going to be much smaller, more con- much more contracted market. I yeah. wonder if that's going to be sort of like the bal- almost like a balancing act to the to the whole. Yeah, you know, I mean, know. I and and yeah, I agree with all that. And and then the the the, the flip side, which I'm I don't know if I I'm curious about, but I had read is that okay, AI will minimize jobs on one end. But it would also make it more accessible for, let's say, like young filmmakers to be able to actually play in a field that used to take a lot more resources. So then right. they'll yeah. be actually needing to. So there might be more jobs becoming available because of that to balance that out. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe that'll be true. <clears throat> yeah, super interesting. Super, super curious where it's going to go. Uh, it's it's like throwing a dart into the into the darkness, you know, like 
where it's gonna go who the fuck knows <laughs> yeah it's hard yeah, to yeah. predict um i think by the time it becomes you know like so sophisticated that we were we will be considering if our like skills are needed at all i mean that that's also just gonna affect all the other industries that's gonna be a much bigger problem you know yeah um, and, and and even just about artwork right it's like when you don't if everything everything that is digital has been assisted with ai is that going to make everything digital feel um like just not fresh or not interesting or degrade the mm -hmm. value of everything i mean we thought that already and i mean you can still see your, your you know hand in people's artwork and we know that ai can't let's just say come up with like a cool design so much just yet but that's probably becoming we know it's great with environments and other things um so yeah. uh, but um <clears throat> you know <clears throat> you know when i think about like my daughter she's going getting ready to figure out her career um <clears throat> and you know she likes art and music and you know I, one thing that i know I, you know is it's never going to be able to replace like literally like the power power of like a human performing right like a music yeah. example because she's a singer and a producer and stuff like that <clears throat> so um you know there's things that are outside the bandwidth of what ai can actually <clears throat> interfere with <laughs> yeah yeah you think the the traditional art will will have its niche i mean it's, it's surely going to have a niche but do you think it's going to have a bigger comeback yeah, i think so i mean i um where i come back i mean the people who knows i had this interesting thought um well yes i always appreciate traditional art i uh, that's what i want to do when i retire like like i you know i i um just want to keep having fun and not having to worry about my like any traditional art having to make a paycheck you know then then it doesn't mm -hmm. become fun um and right now I'm just like, well, as long as people are paying me to, you know, make movies, um, and it's which I really enjoy. I'm a film buff, so I love seeing my <clears throat> work on front on, on uh, in, in the cinema, right? Um, so yeah. that's really, it's it's a way like to me that like my love of art began with seeing Blade Runner and seeing Sid Mead's images and thinking, wow, that contribution to be able to contribute to, it's not just cool designs and cool things, but just everything compact thing each other like the sound the score of that film and the cinematography of that you know and and then of course the storyline the poetry of that all compounded together made me think that is like the that is just like i would love to be able to contribute to that in an art you know just art uh yeah together uh, so anyway so like as long as i can still play in that field i still want to and i don't feel feel like it's kind of selfish to take time away from that while i'm <laughs> still have uh on the stock market so um but um but then i had this uh but in, uh, on a side note i was looking at one of my favorite as i was putting this presentation together uh you know one of the things i talk about just early inspirations is leonardo da vinci um mm -hmm. because his his drawings you know and he was he was a part scientist part artist part inventor and he would just sort of sketch things everything from like a a fetus um a section of a fetus to mechanical things and was just thinking through uh, through sketches like so i think of him as like the very first industrial designer you know and um yeah and i was thinking to myself what if he had access to ai <laughs> i just that just thought <laughs> and i had had to kind of push the my, yeah <laughs> push the boat out on that that was just earlier today and i was thinking well the honest truth is that we've all seen great artists lose their way everyone from filmmakers who created masterpieces and then they get too much money and then they lose their way and you know other artists who get hand on you know i've seen traditional artists get, when they first started using photoshop i was like oh god no just just stay with what you're doing and um and uh it's like a you know it's like a drug that you can abuse or something I, you know i you know I, you you could on, on one hand you would hope people like everyone will use ai just to generate ideas help them brainstorm more quickly or or faster and, and right and yeah so that the idea that they end up making their own is more um i don't know it's just advanced but not <laughs> relying on the tool to create their ideas right their finished yeah work. yeah 
uh, you know, I, I don't know if I don't know how, how much you dabbled in with the, the, AI, the AI tools that exist. Like, have you have you tried Midjourney or any of those mm -hmm. tools? Yeah, dabbled with it. Yeah. Yeah. What I, was your thought? Like, what was your like thought process from like first first time seeing it, playing with it, seeing the results, um, whether you were impressed or not? And then like, how would that go over time? Because it's very interesting for artists specifically what the reaction is. Yeah, I mean, you know, did you and I both work on um, the um, that spider cage on Thor? Did you yeah, work on I think Thor? so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I basically, when that Mid Journey first came out, I we were that movie came out, and I was like, all right, let me just type in some prompts to see how if I could, you know, how well I could do this assignment using that. And it it really was, you know, after spending an hour and retyping and stuff, it, it like it, it basically. I didn't like any of the designs. Um, some of the textures were cool. Some of the backgrounds I could have like erased out and just used the background, right? It's good for, mm -hmm. it's great for environments, but for design, it's really not, um, you know, maybe if there's a design that you could kit bash together, like you're saying, it's a, it's a, it's basically like plagiarism algorithm, right? It's like, right. <laughs> it's not really artificial <laughs> intelligence. It's like, um, yeah. So, so it doesn't have the intelligence to design. It just has the, you know, ability to uh, compile. But um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, in a way, so I, I just I didn't really touch it for that. Um, to me, honestly, while I'm using it now, sometimes it's like, okay, I need a guy running towards camera with a worried expression, you know, in a running pose, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Like I can instead of a Google search, you know, um, to help make a, a frame. But <clears throat> yeah, um, that makes sense. It's a good filler, um, good filler for detail or like a busy kind of work. My, my first impression when I, cause I tried it when the, the journey first came out, just like yourself. And then, um, and then I've played, I've been playing with it quite extensively cause I, I like to, I like to know what the tools can do when I, when I talk about them, you know, um, and the, the 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 recent capabilities of something like stable diffusion and mid journey are insane like in terms of how photorealistic it can get or stylized it is as you say you know very ins quote unquote inspired by by different styles and whatnot or different artists or technically just like literally you're ripping off some artists you know mm -hmm. um but as you say, it's true. It doesn't. It doesn't really design anything. Um, and it, it sort of there's this euphoric thing that happens when when you when the first thing comes out, like your first image that looks super realistic or something, and you're like, wow, like I was able to get that in seconds, right? Mm -hmm. But then after three or four hundred iterations of of doing that, like it becomes this thing where it's like it's boring. Like there's no payoff for yeah. doing any of that, right? Like, oh, like this this amazing image that I just created with this algorithm looks fantastic, but it loses its value literally seconds after. Mm -hmm. Like it yep. becomes almost like a commodity, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that was my that was my 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 like the very very thing that I understood quickly is that it's lacking process. Like it's lacking this this whole process of starting and trying things and coming you know combining together designing different shapes and compositions and like trying different lighting and failing and failing over and over and then eventually like ah oh, that this clicks or the version six of my of my tries finally gets gets what i wanted right mm -hmm. but it's a it's a journey and it's the journey of sort of um experience you, you, yeah. you gather because you're getting no experience from just prompting and like yeah you, you get experience on how to prompt better yeah. that's the only experience you're getting right but you're not really getting any any and if you're not visually trained yeah. to understand what good lighting or composition is whatever comes up whatever comes out of it is just like oh it's great i can move move on you, you don't have that like ah, it's not there yet you know it's not the it's not the right angle it's not you know yeah um yeah, if I, uh, yeah, going back to like um, what you're asking about um, <clears throat> the value of traditional art, like, right? So if you were, if I, if I'm, 
thinking about like my daughter's college admission for like say uh, an art school it, it's almost like any digital art is going to be just like i just wouldn't want if i was a professor i wouldn't want to see any digital art right because you just there's just no way of knowing what <clears throat> um what's in there um and 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 this is true even before Majority. everyone wants to see that you know foundational drawing and um yeah and, and stuff like that so that's always been true but i think that's going to even compound itself even more so and uh and you know i was just like i was saying that with this videographer friend who was you know kind of just interviewing me like i i had kind of forgotten that i had done a ton of life drawing <laughs> earlier in my career <laughs> Uh, and I pulled yeah. some of that. I was like, "Oh, that some of that's not so bad." And you know, you know, part of just the ability when you have, because I still try to go to a when I can. I was on a roll where I was going starting my day every morning in a cafe with a sketchbook and just sort of like planning my day and planning some ideas and just you know starting for like an hour. And that if I actually, actually on this last film, Fantastic Four, uh, I was working with. Um, um, this production designer who really liked my sketches, so I would spend like the pretty much sometimes a whole you know days uh, just sketching, um, and uh, it was so it was so much fun, it was so rewarding, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I don't know I would <clears throat> I hope uh, I think that'll hopefully that'll uh, you know continue to have value. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, I I I think in the public's eye, yes. I think I think people will enjoy the idea of someone putting an effort and you know skill into into creation beyond just like let me just shit out a thousand images in a minute you know yeah. <laughs> or a full movie um, yeah I, I think it, I think it will. But I mean, even the, the other thing is about like a thousand, like I've always, I, I, I always find like any more than three images, three to five, like I'd rather, whenever I show work, I don't, I, even if I have 10 or 20, it's like my job is to curate and to boil yeah. that down to the best ones. And I feel like, and someone told me that once is that what, like something, it was some interesting thing about what happens when your brain is given, um, more than a certain amount of choices more than seven it's like the same reason why phone numbers have a certain number of digits right seven mm -hmm. digits um it's about like <laughs> what happens when you get past seven to your brain <laughs> and uh like you he, he was telling me like once you get past seven you don't think any of them are right like but when you have seven you can kind of decide maybe which one of those is like uh, the best or right. most successful of those seven so I don't know, like <clears throat> that's I think that's also a problem with AI and giving you so many choices. It's like if you uh, if you don't have the ability again, like those foundational things, um, and uh, to to curate, it's important. Yeah, the cho the choice paralysis, like you get too much stuff. Have you ever been asked to like on any of the shows you worked on, to just like, hey, can you make a couple of sketches and just turn around and just make one? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Yeah, I... Asked to do more and you just do one? Yeah, just like I, yeah. I did it like so many times. <laughs> I, a production designer asked me like, "Yeah, can you make a couple of sketches?" Like, "Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, okay." And then I would make like one really good one. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's you know, every artist has their brand, right? Like, some are really yeah. good at doing a bunch that are less refined or something, and especially with design too. It's like I, I just the thing is, I I, I can I never, you never want people to pick a design that you you i personally don't like so i even if i've done like 10 sketches and i don't like seven of them i'm not going to show them <laughs> yeah 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 it's i i it's I, I yeah it depends i think i think the people who understand like specifically like directors and production designers who have a good taste and understand you know art like they're more like artistically visually driven yeah they can tell from just one image if, if that's what what they're getting is what they need, and yeah. then when you and then if you flip it and you're you're showing it to someone who's like maybe more oriented towards the story or where you're working with producer or writer who are not necessarily like visually driven, they would look at it and would have no idea where to go and then just like start like oh let me just become an art director for a second and yeah try to nitpick those can you give me like five more five more because I cannot make a decision you know yeah. Um, I mean that's sort of like the the rabbit hole you can you can uh, get yourself into unfortunately. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. And the other thing too I've noticed about is about when you're saying about like people who have like the uh, like say a director or production designer have the ability to talk in artistic um, language or even just um, like <clears throat> I've I've noticed you know when you're working with a client right they give you direction they push you one way or the mm -hmm. other but you know like I know when I'm on a stumbling block with a design and it needs to have something um but typically the client doesn't have the language to describe they can really just describe they kind of know when they see it right that's always the case they right. know when they see it so it's really up at, it's um <clears throat> it's really i always feel like the pressure is on to to pull the rabbit out of the hat because it's as opposed to just oh it'll get there because of their direction right it's not their direction really isn't going to pull the rabbit out of the hat. Like they kind of just know it when they see it. So when you're like, well, shit, it's on me. <laughs> it's really on me to just yeah. keep iterating, keep figuring it out, not show them too many things. Cause then you can, then, then the direction can start going sideways. Like it's, if once you start showing too many sets, then, then like, I don't know. I think it's, I, I always, I, 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 I kind of found that both challenging, frustrating, but also kind of like really important to know. Um, as mm -hmm. a designer, like, and also because of the timeline, like, like a lot of <clears throat> shows, I kind of have to nail it in my first pass. Like, there's not a ton of time. You don't get to like iterate something for months and then and then find something. Like a lot of times, these movies are made quickly, and the vehicles have to are the first things that have to get built because they they're so intensive, right? So there's a lot of pressure yeah. from the day you start. And I was like holy shit, thank God that came together because there's just no other time <laughs> left <laughs> uh, to, to, you know, so you can't mess around. So like when, yeah, but uh, the, um, that's also very surprising too, too, is like, man, you, to be a professional, you have to like kind of get there like on your first or second pass. Uh, I know that's not true. I mean, I've heard like the use ship on Star Wars. I've heard like there's a there's like that thing like uh, like it took like a year of uh, design back and forth. And there's some things that maybe certain franchises have production budgets to let that a uh, design process go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is there is there a way you you like analyze or is is there are there like any kind of tricks you you think about when starting to because i i totally understand what you're saying it's like when you're working with someone whether it's for the first like if it's if you're working with a production designer or a director for like the third or fourth time you truly understand what they want already like you know how they react to your stuff so so it's much easier but like for the when you're starting with the, uh with them for the first time it's sort of like i agree a massive amount of pressure to figure out hmm are they gonna even like the stuff i'm i'm doing like should I like over impress and over render or, or do yeah. the opposite? Just, just, just create sketches and whatnot. Like, is there, do you have like a specific approach to that or are you kind of wing it? It's like, I'll just do my best. And <clears throat> you, yeah, I mean the, well, the one question I ask is, um, is, um, like, okay, are we in the process of, um, selling this movie? Like, so you need flashy images, right? Mm -hmm. Because to, to get the flashy image, you, you um there's only so many hours in the day so right so you're actually thinking about the the mechanics or the design a little bit less and you shouldn't be i shouldn't be bogged down in that if it's just about getting a flashy image out right but if right. it's if like if sometimes they'll say no 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 this movie's getting made we're we're doing the real we're doing the real meat and potatoes right now so then it's mm -hmm. like okay let's actually now then i don't have to worry about what i turn in being flashy it can literally be about like you know like how are the actors going to get into this like you know the stuff that really uh you have to go through um so that really helps um and um yeah i mean everyone's different some you know some some it's you know they can't understand drawings or black and white and they need flash and color and in situation mm -hmm. and and so i try to just ask the questions to figure that out ahead of time just just save headache <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. Asking a lot of questions helps for sure. Yeah, it's to, to me it's always been a pressure. Like, ah, like am I am I hitting the mark? You know? Yeah. And like trying kind of like sometimes trying to overcompensate. Um, 
but luckily I, I don't think I've ever been uh, in a spot where I like failed miserably. Although, you know, actually I do remember one <laughs> situation where I didn't really fail, but I didn't really hit the mark, but I kept trying is when I was hired like for the first time at Naughty Dog. Yeah. And, uh, and that was like the first two, first one or two illustrations that I made. They were okay. You know, they're like, yeah, it looks cool. You know, and then, and then the third one I made was the this, this, this city kind of block. Yeah. With the, you know, with this massive buildings that are overgrown, like this late afternoon reflected lighting and sort of like this kind of, you know, dappled lighting through the leaves and a lot of like soft light and everything in like the yeah. soft light and shadows. And I remember when I, when I made that, both like everyone, the Bruce Strally, the game director, Neil, and like both presidents, like, holy shit that's it right <laughs> that was like the kind of like ah, oh, and the whole weight like it was like a ton of weight on the shoulders and it's just like it's like dropping the the rucksack you know after like yeah. a long hike <laughs> that's exactly how it felt like you know <laughs> oh good analogy nice yeah nice nice um do you have a situation like that in your career where you're like not really or like just almost getting there but not really and then like this like one banger uh well the story that came to mind actually is um is uh you want to hear a failing story yeah always i'm gonna get a beer for this one Hold on. all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is uh this is my tom cruise story uh all right yeah, the failing <laughs> stories are the best stories because I feel like people make their own make this image of like being so professional and perfect that they never fuck up, you know. Um, <laughs> but we but we all do. We all kind of make mistakes and and then learn uh, from yeah. them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I'm curious and that's, to hear. Yeah, at least you get a good story out of it. So like when I was um, when I first started ILM, right? So this was like you know my dream job, getting into George mm -hmm. Lucas's company, um, and one of my first um, uh, I start off as a storyboard artist and then, you know, that's how they, they, they kind of train you. And then one of my first art director jobs was on the uh, very first Mission Impossible. Um, so this okay. is directed by Brian De Palma, um, who's, you know, a famous director. And um, the visual effects supervisor is John Knoll, who's like one of the inventors of Photoshop. And yeah. he, um, so they, um, he says, hey, well, we're we having this meeting in uh, London with Tom Cruise and Brian De Palma. And I was invited to come out there to help design this visual effects sequence. So I'm at this, uh, you know, at this, uh, you know, A-listers meeting. It's just Brian De Palma, Tom Cruise, myself, some producers, and they're trying to figure out. Um, I don't know if you, and remember in the movie, but they wanted uh, just this action sequence on this train as it is um, going through. There's a helicopter chase. There's a train. Tom Cruise is on top with the antagonist and they want to go through the channel tunnel and they want to have the helicopter go into the tunnel and have Tom Cruise just barely escape death. Mm -hmm. But they can't figure out why a helicopter would ever go into fly into a tunnel, right? They know they, they want to have this visual effect sequence and they want to shoot it with models and, and it'd be really wow, you know, a really big effect, but they just can't figure it out. So this whole meeting is trying to figure out why it should go in there. So, as they uh, kicking around ideas, a couple hours, eventually Tom Cruise says, says, well, does anyone have any ideas? And I think to myself, I mean, first of all, I'm just silent. I'm just there to draw pictures of storyboards and if anyone needs them, right? And, yeah. uh, and I think to myself, oh, oh, man, if I can come out with a banger idea right now, <laughs> my career is going to explode. Like, I'm seeing, like, the montage of myself. It's going to, like, Tom Cruise is, like, <laughs> recommending me to, like, A-list directors. And then I'm on the cover of Time magazine. They're like, who is this guy? And, uh, and the whole time I'm thinking about this, I'm not actually thinking about any ideas. And, then, <laughs> and so, so after, like, a minute, Tom's like, ah, I've got it. I've got it myself. He's like, what if... The, the helicopter is chasing the train, and as right when you know at, at the very last second, the helicopter has nowhere to go, and so it has to pull up and do a giant loop to loop. And at the end of the loop, he's got nowhere to go except for the tunnel. And I, I'm so eager to speak and be part of this table. I just say the first thing that comes to mind, which is, well, that doesn't make any sense, Tom. 
<laughs> and then everything goes quiet. <laughs> and then I have to keep going and I have to go like, and what is even, I'm like, oh shit, I got to keep going with this. So I'm like, you know, why would a, a helicopter even do a loop-de-loop? -loop? And what is even a loop-de-loop? -loop? Isn't that just a loop? <laughs> And my my supervisor's like looking at me like shut up, and even like <laughs> even Brian De Palma's looking at me because Tom Cruise is the producer of this movie practically. So, uh, but eventually, <laughs> after what felt like forever, science, he goes, the kid's got a point. Let's keep working. On it. <laughs> so, if it wasn't for uh, me, you would see a giant loop to loop in Mission Impossible. That would be that would be funny. Uh, yeah, I love it though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had a, um, did I have any situation like that in my career? I had one with Rupert, um, where yeah. he would ask me about something. We were in the meeting with producers and I was on the ghost in the shell and <laughs> I was just like, he would ask me about a design and like some of, some of the earlier designs that I did for myself. And, yeah. you know, I think it was just spitballing ideas like, Hey, what, what if we did something similar to this? And I'm like, not if not until we make my movie. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and I, it was oh, a, like a moment of silence, and then everyone's laughing, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um, it wasn't any any like, hey, like let me fucking here's my moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, was he good yeah, to work with? Hilarious. Uh, yeah, I love Rupert. He's a he's a great he's a great guy to work with. When we awesome. had a, when we were doing uh, Ghost in the Shell. I mean, so the, the way I, the way the way I got to work with him for the first time was this this canceled show that I was doing with with James Chinland, uh, production designer. Yeah. Um, and Rupert was supposed to direct it. Um, the the show was canceled. Like ninety nine percent of the shows in Hollywood, um, ever. Uh, but he really loved the 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 robot designs I did for that. Like really loved them, and I remember James was telling me like, "I'm sorry that we we're canceling the show." Like I know you want because because I wasn't even in a union back then, right? Like we, if they didn't cancel, that would, that would be my like entry to get to the to the art directors guild, uh, and I literally missed like few days uh, of oh, man. work that 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 would would needed to be done. It's like oh that sucks, and but he said like, "Look, like I know it sucks. You you'll have your time." Rupert really likes you and you know that's a good friend to make you know oh, okay, great I totally forgot about it right and then literally a, a year later Rupert just calls me out of the blue it's like hey let's make Ghost in the Shell you know great like, fucking <laughs> let's yeah. go you know um, <clears throat> and when I was work yeah when we were working together I pretty much had like a free reign to do whatever I like yeah and and you know he would maybe have feedback here and there because he really liked everything I was doing. There, there was yeah. there was some there was like very specific assets where we had to go back and forth quite a bit, but I was like very specifically to the cost and making sure you know all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but it was amazing. Like it was amazing to a point where um, someone in the art department, because because they were they were shooting in New Zealand back then, had an idea to name the hotel in which like the film starts with the geishas as Mache Hotel. Yeah. They couldn't find Chinese letters. Oh, really? Like, I was Chinese because of Hong Kong, like Chinese letters to kind of match that. So yeah. they just literally fucking print my name on the entrance of the hotel, just like Mache. As the yeah. guys are running, it just says Mache. <laughs> I was like, holy crap. That's so that perfect. Was, that was super funny. Um, that was kind of like a highlight. But yeah, we've worked on a couple of shows since then. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so. your style is perfect for it, and your work was killer. And uh, uh, so <clears throat> when when you, when they when a I I feel say like you know when directors cast I mean I was saying this to someone like when when a director casts an artist it's like casting an an actor right they choose them yeah. for what they you know what they already uh, like in their work um, and they just have to you know come in and and um, uh, you know, yeah, like the, the, your work was already perfect for him, so it was easy fit, and that's that's great when you can connect with um, connect with uh, the same bandwidth, uh, the, the same vibe as somebody. Um, my uh, 
when, I wonder if I can tell this story. Um, there's a, maybe I'm going to try to do it without naming names. Maybe you can figure it sure. out, but I don't want to, I don't want to, um, you know, cross any political lines. You always have to be careful, but there's a director I really wanted to work with and, um, I really wanted to get his, get his attention. So, um, you know, he had called to, for me to when he started on, the, on this film, but I wasn't available and I couldn't get out of it. And uh, so he had to, the production had to get going. And once and he was like, well, let me know when you're free. <clears throat> um, so I knew at that point he had already hired artists and there was, you know, it's never guaranteed that they can just make a space for you because production's production. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually going to be in this director's town for like my wife had a, a conference there and I was speaking at. So. Uh, I decided to just email this director saying, hey, I'm going to be in your town. Um, would you like to meet, you know, can we meet for coffee? And, um, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I was like, well, shit, I got to, I got to entice him. So I said, I'm going to have some artwork that's going to blow you away. And, uh, and he wrote back and he's like, yeah, let's absolutely, let's do that. That, that timing is perfect. And I was like, oh, fantastic. It's great. And then I realized Oh shit, that's in two weeks. I don't have any artwork. I don't have any, any ideas of what to do. And I've just pro- <laughs> and I've just promised this a list director images that are gonna blow him away, which is like a f- high bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I just I went to work and I was like, oh man. And I had a job too. So I had on my on downtime I, I created like four images um, and uh, and I showed him the work there, and the meeting was great, and and the images were like it wasn't like oh these images are great. He was like he was really enthused about how like about my passion for the project, and we had awesome like conversation about the project, and um, so that all worked out. And um, the images I had done were just you know just kind of get his attention, right? Mm-hmm. And then the movie is shot, and I'd worked on it, and uh, he he rings me up and says. Um, you know, I've had one of those images that from that meeting on my laptop this entire movie, and I've never known how to work. I never knew there was never a way for me to put that in the movie, but now that I've seen the whole movie done, I want to make that the be. Oh, I want the Im- the movie to begin with that image, and uh, let's. I was like, can you hire? Can you? I want to hire you back to kind of figure that out more. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so to me, like that was really cool because it was like basically I yeah. just closed my eyes and imagined what what I could vision this uh, to, to, to look like for me personally, right? And the, for him to want that in this opening was like amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. It's very rare. I, I you know, it's, I, I, you know this too. Um, working directly with director is rare, like very rare. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you mostly work with like production designers and video game art directors, let's say. Um, but it's, 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 it's also just, I think, just more fun. Like, not, not, not to disparage on, on production design, but it's just like m- closer to the source. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely feels no. that way. That is um, that. Sorry, what you described there is literally like why, my, my um, what motivates me the most uh, to do my job, mm-hmm. um, is because I was talking about with this a friend and about like why don't you take time off? Why don't you do this? And like right now. Like I'm such a film and cinema lover, and that when you can get in those close relationships, it's really, you know, it's it's it, it doesn't make your credit change. It doesn't. No one cares. It's just literally like the artistic yeah. process. Um, and being um, like right now, I'm just I'm on a a, a film with just the director, production designer, <clears throat> and uh, and it's so early that we're just bouncing a whole lot of what ifs and coming up with imagery, and that's just the gold the gold mine of, uh, of mm-hmm. what, you know, motivates me. Cause it's just, it's just so fun to work that way. Um, yeah, so, I mean, and, thinking, and, you're not thinking to retire anytime soon. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if, uh, as soon as, as soon as, um, I basically would like, I was telling my friend, Emmanuel, you might know Emmanuel, like he's a good buddy. Of oh mine. yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Great. And, uh, and we, you know, we go out to lunch every month, once a month and, um, and just talk shop and, uh, and, Don't you guys um, live like pretty close to each other? Yeah, in yeah, in the Bay Area. Area. I live in mm-hmm. in, uh, in Berkeley. He lives down in uh, San Francisco, and um, and um, I don't know. It's basically just there are lulls when just nothing cool is happening, right? And that's yeah. 
and when that happens uh that's when i would take take some time off um as long as there's some interesting stuff going on i want to i want to you know enjoy it yeah yeah how did you get how did you get to know uh wachowskis how do you how that how did that whole thing happen i'm asking because like it's it's interesting uh when you were talking about them treating artists almost like family i, I had exactly same treatment when i went to see the uh the ghost in the cell sets uh, mm -hmm. uh, the ghost in the shell sets uh in new zealand and rupert's like you're gonna be in town like come in and you know i would be in the set in his booth together with dp you know, talking to Scarlett Johansson, so like, oh my God, like, what is happening? You know? Yeah. So that was that was kind of like super cool. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm curious, like, how because like I remember seeing the stuff you've done for Matrix. So I was like, what? That that was the the first stuff I saw I've, I've seen from you, by mm. the way. And I was like, who the fuck is that guy? You know, oh. like, this is just crazy. Um, so I'm I'm very curious, like, how did that all kind of went down? You know, I um. When I, when I decided to leave Industrial Light Magic, I was an art director for like, uh, I was there for six years. And mm -hmm. I realized, you know, this is like, I was at my dream sort of job, I had thought, but I really wasn't doing what the pre-production art that I like had, had like, that I, that, you know, going back to the Sid Mead sketches and the stuff that really inspired me, I was like, that is the dream, is to be at the very beginning, what we were talking about with the director, like that is the 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 pot of gold and um so i basically quit and i was like um somehow i had gotten the address of the wachowskis um i basically went and, and dug around and i found an address and i put a portfolio together and i sent it to them and and they were like uh <clears throat> you know, yeah, move to LA and let's get going. Like, um, so I had moved from San Francisco to LA and that was like my big, like, I'm going to LA, I'm going to Hollywood, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> cause Lucasfilm is up in, in the, in San Francisco. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, you know, uh, you know, I got a place in, um, Santa Monica and, and they had this like gorgeous facility and in, in Venice. And, um, that was like some of the best times of my life. Cause you know, um, really getting into pre-production and, and um, meeting people I've worked with a long time, like um, Tani Kunitaki, Steve Skaros, um, Jeff Darrow was there. And um, so we've did a lot of movies all over the world together. And, um, and, uh, sick. and yeah, and like you say, like when you're, when the, the directors treat you like that, you, you know, you get to, to the parties, the after, after parties and, uh, and, um, it just it just makes it yeah it just makes it really rewarding um and uh if i was if if i i hope n younger artists who do who are in the industry you know i would say that's a reason you know i was about to say reason to live in la like yourself to get to make sure you have that you get a chance to have that experience in person with talent um and not just stay remote from the time you've you're 20 to to 50 or whatever yeah. right <laughs> the rest of your career so anyway it, yeah it's uh it's gold there. Yeah, maybe not LA anymore because because I like almost no productions are done in LA anymore. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have a chance to work on something and and you really like it, just go 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 and be there if you can if if you can make it happen to go and be there and then next to the team, you the the lessons you get are um, invaluable. You know. Yep. Just being like in person rather than working remotely. And then when you get older, you can just remote everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny, man. Like it's you, you mentioned, you know, all the shows you were working on. Like we we worked on a few uh, together as well. Uh, not not in on, not in the office, but like online. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the Jupiter Ascending yeah. and uh, the, the last one you've mentioned, Tor. I, I I like I was working on that like remotely too. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been a few, and then you work with like a bunch of people that I worked with like b before, like oh, I'm pretty sure you worked with Owen Patterson before, and, yeah, and John Gay, yeah, yeah. yeah, both amazing yeah. people. Um, totally. John John is amazing as well. Like I pretty much since I the first project I did with him was the Jupiter mm -hmm. something, and we've worked on like seven or eight projects since then. Yeah, um, like different ones. He's just an amazing human beings, uh, human being, you know. And I get get to meet his, you know his fiance and wife now and all that kind of stuff. So great. It's yeah. like we send each other uh, Christmas cards, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Man. Um, yeah. 
Look, I don't want to like hold up your time. I know you're on, uh, strapped on time, uh, and so we can we can like slowly wrap it up. Uh, I think by the time we're gonna release this, the Dune, the new Dune is coming yeah. out. I know you worked on it too. Yeah. I saw like the Lego ornico Ornithopter too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have right it. There. That's amazing. Uh, the Lego one's still in the box, but this is one you can buy too. Right. This is yeah. A, uh, okay. I know you designed it. Uh, how fun was that shit, dude? The what to 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 work on it? Or what do you mean? Yeah, to work like everything and working oh, yeah. with Denis as well. Denis is one of my like from the newer newer directors cut like the cut of directors. He's like my favorite by far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think myself so lucky because even before like the first movie, I he did this movie called Incendies, and, um, mm -hmm. and of course Prisoner, and I just thought like, wow, this this guy's amazing. amazing movies. I love, yeah. love his movies. And I mean, when I think about like some of my favorite movies and my my personal like top whatever ten, it's very hard. But I mean, obviously, you know, um, uh, you know, Blade Runner is in there. But I when I think about Danny, like, I love movies that like, of course, Blade Runner for its design. I like you know Lawrence of Arabia for its you know ep, you know colonialism and the epicness of it. I like Terrence Malick's film Thren that Red Line for its poetry. Uh, Baraka, you know, uh, uh, you know about nature, and like Denis encompasses like kind of like all those qualities in the types of yeah. film, the film that he makes. Also, but also to be really honest, the the most important thing is about intelligent science fiction. I get you know most most movies just use science fiction as a vehicle to tell an action story and just kind of throw away, but like you know <clears throat> my thing about like, I think the reason why Blade Runner was so important to me as a child is because it like it really made me feel something in the way like great science fiction does. Like mm -hmm. it, it tells the yeah, human story, but through the lens of science fiction, it almost makes you feel that more than if it was just on the nose. Like, um, right. so I don't know. So I, I, uh, I'm just really lucky that, uh, yeah, I got to be invited to that party. Um, and, uh, yes, it's super fun. I, I just, uh, um, saw the re-release of Dune one, uh, when they re-released it in IMAX and, um, and uh, um, yeah, obviously the second one's coming, uh, gonna uh, come out. It's getting great reviews, and and that's the dream. Like the the whole thing about like, you know, my dream is to have worked on something that's considered a science fiction masterpiece. And I pretty yeah. much gave up on that dream about ten years ago. And you're just like, <laughs> they, just, they just don't make those anymore. <laughs> so except uh, of the knee, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's rare. Yeah, it's this one of those things where you, you work on something and. It's like, is it gonna be good or not? Like, who the fuck knows? <laughs> yeah, and you and we as artists, we can't beat ourselves. It's like it, 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 it. There's no way to keep it away from your ego, but you have to. You just have to do your job as best as you can, and um, and then hope that you get you know noticed when the right opportunity comes along. So. Yeah. True. True. I think it's a good moment. Good. Good. Uh, good quote to end on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> Thanks well, for the invite, man. Time, dude. Uh, we should chat off a long off time coming. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, of course. You have my number. We can, yeah, we can yeah. talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're going. You're preparing for a conference, so I'll let you do that. Uh, good luck with uh, whether it's a travel or not. I'm pretty sure it's travel. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited. By the time this comes out, it will be already after the premiere, but I already already have tickets for for Dune Two. Oh man, week. yeah. Uh, I go. Uh, uh, when I at, at both of these the last Dune, I uh, my friend rented a like a party bus like a luxury like a limo van uh. bus, <laughs> and we like party there went to the movie party back and you know Dune inspired cocktails it was like it was a whole thing and so uh, I've got two viewings this weekend and next uh, with a whole bunch of friends so it's gonna be great. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, well. Have fun with that, and uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks again, dude. Always, yeah, always man, let's... fun talking with you. Yeah, let's do it again, pal. Take care. Yep, take care. <laughs> All right, I'll stop.